going, Dr. Chris here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to do something that you should be doing every single time within your GIS, and that is create a Python tool with only seven Python commands and two ArcPy commands. Here we go. All right, here I am back in my basement office where once again, I'm a free agent in GIS, geoscience, graphic design, and in video production. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about Python coding within ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to show you just how easy it is, just how fast you can do it. And if you're lucky, I'll leave the links down below for you to download the Python code all for yourself. Before I get going, if you want to support my channel, I've got a Teespring store down below where you can get some GIS and Geoscience t-shirts, all designed by yours truly. Also, I've got a website, geographicinformationsuccess.com. You can sign up for my newsletter there. I'm pretty new to this blogging stuff, but let's have fun with it. I'm going to do a little bit of an explanation about the coding right now. Again, I'll be talking about ArcGIS for personal use, and a reminder that Esri is not paying for this, but they can if they like. This is part of my series on Build a Bulletproof GIS. You're going to need a few things here. You're, of course, going to need ArcGIS Pro. You're going to need a Python IDE. That's an integrated development, envir development environment. I'm using Spider, and that comes with Anaconda, I believe. You don't really need to install Anaconda. I'm going to suggest you do, because that gives you a whole bunch of libraries that you may never use. Because I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create a snippet of... Or, Create some Python codes using a little bit of snippets that you can use over and over and over and over and over again within ArcGIS Pro. Now, why would we want to do programming within ArcGIS Pro? Well, we actually don't have to. There's a lot of things where you, all you have to do is click and stuff happens. Click, stuff happens, click, stuff happens, click, stuff happens. Me, I'm pretty lazy. I like doing things only once. That's why I like creating systems of tools that are integrated and repeat themselves over and over again. It makes me a little bit lazy, but get some pretty cool stuff going. A little bit of code that we're going to do today is in is has to do with geo databases. Now, when you start an ArcGIS project, it automatically creates a geo database with your project name. Now, for me, I like having at least two other geo databases. That being a Ratch geodatabase and a raster geodatabase. I'll probably talk about my, my rationale for those in the future. What you're going to initially need is to import, oh, I've got that out of order, two Python libra libraries, just OS and ArcPy. You only get ArcPy if you've got ArcGIS Pro. Oh, I'm sorry, probably, probably Map as well. I haven't used Map in so long. I assume so. You probably can use it. Oh, that's not quite true. Now remember that now. Some of the commands are slightly different between Map and ArcGIS Pro. I should say slightly. They're completely different. We'll just talk about ArcGIS Pro. There are only seven Python commands that you're going to need to use in this little program. These Python commands are def, which creates helps us create a function. Helps us. It creates a function that we can call over and over again. We're also going to need get cwd that's within os this is so we can get the working directory because from that working directory that is where we're going to stick the your database and that is where we also want to pull out the project name from our from our arcgis project we also need a loop this is a for loop go around a couple times because we're going to have multiple names for different geo databases you can go from you can do this once twice a million times when you when you get this i'll show it to you in a bit we're also going to need split we're going to need split because we're going to take what we we're going to take what we get from get cwd and then we're going to split it up so we can pull out the project name so we can use it on the next one and that is format where we're going to recombine project name with the geo databases that we want to create that was seven python commands that we're going to need we need two ArcPy commands. These are pretty basic. This is just uh, commands. Watch this. The magic of editing. Fixed. And we're going to need two commands. Ah, doesn't matter. Get parameter as text. That's where, what we're saying is we're going to get the parameters from the ArcGIS tool. In this case, there is only going to be one. 
The second one is add message. Now I like to add a message because I like to remind myself of what I'm actually doing with the tool. My more complex tools have many, many messages just so I know what's going on while the code's running. See that? There's only seven Python commands and two ArcPy commands. Here we go. Here I am in ArcGIS Pro. I've already created a project. I have called it library. That's something I'm going to talk about in a future video. It's a, it's a library where I like to keep all my domains, all my subtypes, all my reused features. So I don't have to build them and I can just go into the library, grab what I need, bring it into another project. I'll talk about that in the future. Right now, all we've got is one your database library right here. For me, I like to add two. You can add three, you can add 10. I'm going to show you how many you can, you could add a thousand of them if you want. By the way, I'm going to show you how to create a tool. Let's start off by adding a a new script to my library. I'm going to call this script because I want to create a new geo database or some some new geo databases. I'm going to call it GDB Builder. The name the name here has to, can't be it can't have an underscore can't have spaces, but on this label we can. So we're going to call this geo database builder. Now. We have to aim this at a script file. This is where we go back to our IDE that in my case is spider. The spider, I'm going to come over here. And what I've got set up already is a template. I'll leave that down below too, where I've already got some of the stuff in there I consistently use in all my little Python tools. Got a bunch of stuff commented out at the beginning. I've got the first line of code called import OS and ArcPy. I've got a definition that's ready to go. The name has to change, and we'll, we'll change that name. We also have get argument from the tool that we're going to be using in ArcGIS Pro, and then a call to the function right here. I'm going to save this template now as a properly named Python tool. Save as Python tool. I've already actually built one, but I'm going to call this different. We'll call this Python your database builder. Oof. Dr. Chris, PR Chris, save. I'm just going to fill in some of this documentation I've got here. The file is geodatabase builder, Dr. Chris version 0.1. It'll, 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 we'll get it running first try, I guarantee it. We've got a tool we can link back into our, back in ArcGIS Pro. So that's right here, the script file within the new script. So I'm going to link back in there, folders, Python tools, and we link it to geodatabase builder, Dr. Chris. Now we could save it here, but it's nothing's going to happen because I haven't put any parameters. In. I like saving it right here just in case I screw up the parameters. I'm going to press save. I'm going to go back into the geodatabase builder. I click on properties and then go to parameters. Now in this case, we're going to only need one parameter. And that is some geodatabase names that we want to name our multiple geodatabases. So I'm just going to call this GDB names. And the function is going to be, the variable is going to be GDB names. And the data type, it is going to be a string, and we're going to make it multiple values. Say OK. Apply this on over to default. I'm going to have two defaults. Now let's make it three defaults, just so you can see it working. Each, and these are the names that are going to be tacked on at the end, because I want library underscore scratch, library underscore rasters, and might as well have library underscore backup. And we even add one ourselves when we run the tool. Okay, so the first one is called scratch, and then it's separated by a semicolon, and raster, semicolon, and then backup. That's all we need to do. The parameters are now set. I could run the tool right now. Still nothing's going to happen. I will show you. So we click on the database builder. Right now, these are the only parameters I've got. Scratch, raster, backup. But I do know that it is going to go back to my Python program here. And what actually is going to happen is it's only going to execute this. Actually, what we're going to change right now is we'll make some changes within ArcGIS right now. Sorry, within Spider right now. We're going to call this DD. DDB builder. Got a mic written on my hand. 
pdb builder that's going to be called the argument it's going to be the function and the argument coming out are going to be the names and this will work or should work so we run it view details right there it says starting current function current function is a jet database builder remember we're going to use seven commands for this little program we're going to go back here so what happens is we want to we're, we're now these arguments are actually the geodatabase UD names all of the names we're going to send them into our geodatabase builder function we know that the tool is going to run but what we now need build a geodatabase so we can copy the python code and put it into our little python tool i'm going to close this i'm going to go back up into analysis click on tools and we're going to find the create geo database geo processing right there create file geo database it asks for the geo database location i'm going to go in we'll give it the location which is right there and the name the name is going to be just a placeholder for now we'll call this library do not use and run it okay let's run if i go into my that folder There it is, library do not use. What we want now is the Python snippet from here. So we go open history. Right here, create file geodatabase. I'm going to right click on it, copy Python command. I'm going to go back to my spider code. And I'm going to put it in here as a placeholder. Now there's a bunch of stuff we want to get rid of. This is obviously the directory that it's saved in, and this is the name. These are the two things that we're going to want to put in our for loop. To start off, we want to get this directory right here. And I've already showed you the little snippet of code that is os.getcwd or get current directly. So directory. So I'll call this current directory equal to os.get. And that's always a brilliant thing when it suggests it. There we go. Get current directory. Now, another thing we need is the name. Check this out. What do you see here at the current directory where we've made the file geodatabase? Project name is right there. And that is what we want. How do we get that out of the current directory? That's where we use split, if you remember that from what I talked about before. So here is get, here's another little snippet of code that we're going to use. We call this project name is equal to current directory dot split. Split. Now, Double quotes, and I have to use, I have to double the backslash because it's a special character. Backslash or forward slash. Just forget. Backslash, and we want to get the last chunk that's been split, so we have to go square brackets minus one. And now we've got the current directory, we've got the project name, and now we just have to cycle through those geodatabase names that we've put in there. We use a for loop because we want to get to each individual each individual name. So I go for gdb name in gdb names. Now we have to split that up again. We actually want to split it based on the semicolons that were within that are being exported out of ArcGIS Pro. So split comes into again. So we go split based on colon. So what we now have got, we've got the current directory, project names, and we're cycling through and grabbing each individual name that we've put in. Now we have to construct a new name. We're down here in this part right here, library do not use. This is where the format comes into effect. So we call this, let's call this new DDB name equal to quotation curly brackets underscore curly brackets. This is with for format, we want current directory whoops current directory i love when they do that tab and gdb name we have to remember to now put this little snip fix this little snip of the code we're going to put it within the for loop we have to get rid of this little chunk of information here in favor of the current directory you want to get rid of this name right here and use our oh it's not current directory sorry project name cut that one 
and we're going to put new geodatabase name into here. Now, look a little better. Oh, I've got to, got to make sure that the argument is now geodatabase names. And if we're really, really lucky, this will work on the first shot. Ah, oh, let's clean this up a bit more. Call this starting geodatabase builder. Now, I like putting in other stuff, but this is a really short snippet of code that you can use in future projects. It'll make your geodatabases over and over and over again. Let's give this a try. Let's go back to ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to go back to the catalog. I'm going to run the geodatabase builder. I've got three names in there, scratch, raster, backup. And if I'm lucky, it's going to work on the first try. Run. And let's see if it's run. Go back into my folder. There we go. Geodata, or library underscore backup geodatabase, raster, and scratch. Now you can add any number of geodatabases you want. So let's put in, we'll call this geodatabase one, two, three, and just run it. And you're now going to have something that builds geodatabases just like that. Go back to the folder. There they are. One, two, three. You can make hundreds of them this way if you like. For me, I would chain this into the other stuff that I do at the beginning of projects, so I don't have to keep on making these geodatabases over and over again. Now, you would have to be careful because you don't want to run this over geodatabases that are populated because I'm pretty sure it'll start destroying data, but you can get that's where you get a little more clever back in your code when you start using stuff like if exists, don't do this. If it exists, don't do that so you don't lose your geodatabase. <laughs> And that was my tutorial on creating a Python tool within ArcGIS Pro. As you saw, it was pretty easy. Now you've got something that can work over and over and over again for all your future projects. And you can stick it into other little programs so that it does it automatically. I'm going to leave the Python tool down below, fully documented if I remember to do that for your future use. As a reminder, I've got a Teespring store where you can get some geoscience and GIS shirts to support my channel. That would be awesome. Also, I've got a website, geographicinformationsuccess.com, where you can sign up to my newsletter, get some valuable information every week. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Until next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.